Good morning, everybody. Today we are discussing about the salivary gland disorders. In this topic, mainly we are what are the uh, disease and what are the problems that are affecting on the salivary gland, like parotid, submandibular, subclavian, like that. So, what are the uh, indication and contraindication for the particular treatment, and uh, how we can do the Patho pathologies we can see on the cellular gland also. So already we know about this the classification of cellular gland disorders. The development like uh, aplasia, atresia, hypoplasia, like a continuous cellular line, and enlarged due to inflammatory that is called cellular disease that is due to viral, bacterial, allergic and uh, sarcosis and gland nodomas and post Going for the non-inflammatory lack of fetal, that means any tra trauma or any obsession of the gland, that is due to papillary obsession of the gland, or obsession of the ductal lumen, or obsession of the change of the duct uh, cyst, and also other things like uh, cell adenosis or cellulosis, and autoimmune disorder like this, Sjogren syndrome and tuberculosis disease. The other things like tumor, that means cancer like to go for adenos like the formerly Seen like a pleomorphic adenoma and like quartz and soma, basal cell adenoma, like that. If you're going for the CA, that is called a basal cell adenoma, adenocystic uh, carcinoma, uh, basal cell adenocarcinoma, cellular duct carcinoma, like that. A lot of carcinomas are, we can say, common cell carcinoma. These are the common carcinomas we can see in cellular glands. It is not common. I tell you what, these are the things. And uh, non epithelial tumors, malignant tumors, secondary tumors, and anthracite tumors they are there. Tumor like lesions, uh, latinosis, oncocytosis, uh, metaplasia, these are the things. So, how will you examine these salivary gland disorders according to the age group and the gender? There may be male protection, female protection, like that. So, a medical professional will go to provide. Uh, the helpful tools like uh, diabetes, hormonal imbalance, neural disorders, and fluid and electrolyte bias. Uh, drug history that uh, related to the retarded cellular flow is actinocholesterol, antidepressant, antiemetic, antihistamines, antihypertensive drugs, antipsychotic drugs, diuretics, muscle relaxant, tranquilizers, things that will retard the salivary uh, flow. From the salivary gland. So, a careful examination we need for the all the things because uh, there are a lot of reasons are there to uh, reduce the salivary flow and the uh, uh, flow of the patient. So, first we go to the physical examination, how you examine your superficial, a local examination, salivary allows the insertion through intravenously or extravenously according to the size of the uh, gland. Extraordinary by symmetry, color, uh, order the uh, possible pulsation and design of the science and of both sides. Check bilateral. If the one side is normal, other side will be abnormal, we can notice it easily. And second neurological defects, we can also inspect. In Rowley, through using the doctor or face and the position of the obstruction. So, extra, after the extraordinary palpation, also using the bimanual palpation and the uh, if there will be obsession, don't palpate too much, otherwise, you will slip to the plan. So, if you're going for the investigation, what are the investigations commonly used for the cellular that is cellography, CT, MRI, cell neuroscopy, and USG? So, the investigations they mainly only CT and MRI, MRI also you can for the uh, soft tissue. So it will demonstrate the greater contrast of the CT scan, but it can produce the little surrounding tissue in MRI. CT mounts used for the heart and MRI is for the soft tissue. So two may have the medical profession that displays the retromandible vein laterally to the vice versa. Ultrasound and determine whether the cystic or solid that will go for the ultrasound. And FNAC, what the collecting fluid we can see. Uh, so the difference between the malignant and the non-malignant tumors we can notice. 
in the CT scan and the, they will be swelling or the sarcoma. We can go for the MRI, they can see the soft tissue mass. And going for the, the radiographs, what are the things we can notice in the uh, stones? If you're going for a closer radiogram, we can notice there will be sublingual or subprandial stones will be noticed through the occlusal radiograms. So what is the algorithm? It's a technique used for the examination of the uh, parenchyma or extraductal abnormalities. It involves the can uh, cannulation and filing with the radiopic type or uh, contrast type to make it visible to, on the radiogram. To integrate, uh, to indicate the changes of the internal structures. So indication mainly they uh, detect the calcul and the foreign bodies. Diagnose and they reckon swellings, detection of tumor size, location and the origin. And also the result stones, stenosis and the fistula after the surgical procedures. So what what are the Contraindication for the radiography that is no the patient having allergic to item then don't give and during the acute phase of inflammation of the gland the acute separatis or nitis no that will do with the dissemination of the macular foci and the patient shall have thyroid function test that is very important and we also to the systemic circulation and interface the uh, interface with that test. So you must go for the thyroid function test also before we inject in the ID. So the technique is nothing but you directly enter the diatectal reverse and explore the diatectal probe and the conventional duct and inject the dye with the polyethylene tube for a two ton ml syringe and inject that. So after that, so we go for examination, we can see the uh, pattern contrast media they are using uh, lipid soluble oil, oil base is there water soluble is there uh, that contain that 35 uh, percent of uh, iodine and water is uh, 20 to 38 percent of iodine so that now the more viscous and not diluted by saliva more pressure uh, the water soluble that we uh, calculate more radically we can see the end less painful for the injection. The phases of cytography that is uh, duct, first one is the ductal phase starts with the ductal injection of contrast media into the ductal orifice and so the gradual parenchyma appearing hazy and uh, reflecting uh, opacification. So we can uh, the, see on the X-ray uh, like uh, anthroposterial lateral view like that. Fill in the various stringy stones, dilated ducts, and see in the cell adenitis. So, uh, what we can see the large system such as the adjacent ducts, non localized narrowing seen in the present, and you will find this over the ducts. Next one is the axna phase, that with the uh, the completion of the ductal operation and then there will be generalized increase in the density so not reflecting the feeling of the gland parenchyma. So looks on the androposa and lateral for the perverted lateral people. And evacuation of the face that is usually assessing the secretory function of the gland following the stimulation with the silo hook. So Cellulite and extra ductal and external contrast media maximization in this organ syndrome and the malignant tumors. So, collection of the contrast media is associated with cavities, theoretically, small residues seen in the cell nitis and the cellulitis. So, what we see in the normal cellulitis, we can see a tree like branches of the cell, we can see on the cell graph. So, what no when going for the Sign adenitis again, we can see that uh, apple tree in the blossom. That's called apple tree in the blossom. There will be some deception we can see on the external dilation. If you're going for the tumor, if you have the uh, patient having benign tumor or something, the central mass is the ductal displacement with you. So that is called bone in hand. 
we are going to the manual door there will be discussion of the tactile cells will be there so the normal pattern will be changed after like a bruise on bone in the hand like there are, there are different patterns are there for the vein tumors manual tumors this is silent is that is an inflammatory condition what is the main reason for the style adenitis So in uh, the main intuitive is to create a greater complexity and the length of the parotid and submandula ducts. These glands are more susceptible for the infection, mainly the uh, parotid and the submandula. Uh, and uh, the infection chava tend to tell uh, ductulus which open to the paralingual sulcus, infection of the parotid and more common to the compared to the submandula. So uh, there are two types acute and uh, chronic uh, acute bacterial uh, silent disease uh, primarily disease age and uh, chronically uh, ill and majority of the patients 60 to 60 years other thing is a retrograde bacterial infection and second is serostomy the main cause of the staphylococcus aureus or uh, streptococcus aureus are commonly caused organs So the clinical features noting a swelling will be on the salivary gland and there will be tender to uh, swelling, fluctuation, warm, red or line skin. Because of the parotid features family adhered to the gland, parotid swellings are very painful and pollen discharge from the duct and patient having fever will be there. Diagnosis mostly is they go for a USG, uh, first culture, CT scan. Treatment is also only uh, strong antibiotic coverage and analysis. If the pus is more, then go for incision and drainage. So, uh, but uh, what is the main thing is you know, if you're going for the incision and drainage, you know, especially on the parent, never damage the patient there also. That is very important. The antibiotic commonly used amoxin or amoxin. Amoxicillin gas or metronidazole or superfluxacin. These are the commonly drugs they are using for the uh, antibiotic uh, for the cell entities. So the if you're going for the incision and drainage, the norm commonly is called modified player incision. It starts from the periorbital region and goes below the uh, uh, ear and goes to the Retromandibular region and so you never uh, traumatize the uh, facial nerve also because the facial nerve is passing uh, from the external region 3 to 5 centimeter uh, uh, yeah, in front of the ear. Yeah, so you put the incision always to uh, uh, do it under G only, not on the link. So after reflecting, we go for layer by layer dissection with uh, the infection, the pus, you know, the incision and using with the curvatory forces or something. Reflect all the facial nerve. Then we go after putting the Remove the, all the positive cells from there and we using the correlated rubber tray. Then only the pus is the connected in that uh, paragland, no? then they can drain off according to the gravity. Next one is cellulosis. It's the formation of cell that means the obsession that can see on the uh, cellulary duct. It's called cellulary algorithm. Around the 83 percent of the mostly from the Watson's tract and distance of the around 7 uh, percent age. So, cellulose is commonly well with the material of uh, nudes and which may uh, discriminate epithelial cells by giving the presence of stagnant saliva. So, composed on like uh, carbonate or phosphate, as well optical calcium phosphate. The main causes of the submandular cellulose submandular secretion more viscous than mucus. Higher calcium content will be the alkaline pH in the secretion. The position of the gland and the duct 
force below the opening into the oral cavity, hence salivary secretion against the gravity. More point to the stagnation. And Watson's duct is the longest uh, salivary gland seen in Lena in the muscular port. Two sharp bends will be there. Uh, so the bend will be there, that will be the obstruction will be more. Already you can see the salivary gland where it is situated. Parietal duct that uh, stones can be found in the four locations. First one is the embedded near to the parotid papilla, opening of the parotid transverse uh, duct. Next one is the submucous course of the duct. It's a glandular course of the duct over the mass heater and the vaccinator muscle and interglandular course of the duct. You can please see the parotid capsule. Uh, so the parotid gland in front there will be sensor duct will be there so there will be any area they can uh, obstruction on the salary duct in the features you can notice for this you know, normally in the middle age patient and mainly the salary obstruction during eating uh, of the food so there will be uh, salary secretion so at that time pain will be more common. Stone in the duct of the felt, palpation to the floor of the mouth, stone within the submandular gland and felt the bimandular palpation only. Plexus also within the stensor duct and palpation within the cheek. Glycation uh, most, uh, mostly the, we'll go for the uh, radiographs or we can use using cellography and the ultrasounds. Is that the commonly used one. So the complications are mainly that uh, cellulosis, dilation of the uh, duct and the ductal system, bacterial infection for a long standing uh, obstruction, formation of the mucosal retention of the uh, mucosal that will be there, granular and chronic obstruction that is atrophy and sedative gland. The non surgical management. Without surgical management, what we will do the small salary can be removed by manipulation to, uh, that is, uh, or with the use of uh, cellulose that called milking of the gland. Next one is the extra corporation short wave literacy. Use of transcutaneous electromagnetic waves to break up these small stones so that will be around uh, uh, less than uh, 3 cm greater than like then the small will be you can crush okay if you're going for 3 mm no sometimes it will come out if it is greater than 3 mm no then you will crush out using that metromantic waste and with the saline and the cellulose milk surgical management where the larger stones have a surgical access through transcellotomy and cellulandoscope that is revision of, of the cellular tank with the marsupialization. Next one is the extra oral surgery that will be uh, extra oral incision will be taken out. The stones, uh, uh, next other one is the stones with the gland parenchyma uh, that uh, gland excision. Some cases, you know, the multiple stones are there, then we'll go for a uh, uh, cell antimony also. We'll do for the matter gland. So, first of all, we will identify where actually the stone is. After that, only we can start the procedure. That means submandrous transverse cellulotomy, that is the line of incision for the postural stone. Superficial also, the the line will be different. So always when you're going to do the procedure, we always put a knot on that particular area because otherwise uh, the stone will push back to the salary gland. First of all, we'll put a knot the, so that can be prevent the stone to back to the 
relevant and where the actual histone will be using with the bimanual band patient and above there will be insertion on that is a uh, submandular duct then opera and suture other will be the spillage of the uh, saliva let's see in the photos where they will put the knot where we use no other ways uh, it will go so there will be a tie wire will be using with the suture material and we will put the concentration on the particular area using with the uh, supporting with the curve articles to support the duct then we will put the incision then the, so the long should be on the artery forceps and remove it you can see so the where the actual stone will be there on the above the curve artery forceps and we can put the incision on the particular point and take out the uh, using with the people with incision space and take it out normally. Next one is cell adova coplasty. Cell adova coplasty is nothing but it's a plastic surgery that can perform on the salary gland duct because there will be uh, perforation happen no? then for uh, plastic surgery performing parotid cellulotomy that is the same thing you know identify where is the actual calculate it is difficult compared to the submanual one and we use with the same thing you put a uh, knot because uh, there is a reverse direction of of the stone then the incision space over that particular stone and take it out and suture it properly the main incision line that's only for this parotid exoli by cellotomy is from the in between the nail of the base and the corner of the in the middle and towards to the external otomy address so in that particular point the sensors that is going When you go for the extra oral uh, parotid cellular trophy, what will know the main structures like facial nerve will be there, parotid capsule, and the other structures, special uh, vessels, everything will be there. So, we'll be careful for that only if the stone is inside the parotid gland, then only we'll go for this procedure. If it's in the ductal region, we can go using with intraorally. Next one is the mucosal. It's the clinical term uh, used for the describe the mucose extraction phenomenon as a mucus retention disease. So the mucus extraction phenomenon is due to the trauma to the minor or surgical glands, uh, uh, minor cellular glands, resulting in their retention of saliva in the surrounding tissue. And essentially, it goes with the forces and signal like the epithelial lining. So, the mega retention is differs from the mucus excretion phenomenon in that it's the result of obstruction of salivary flow as well as being the surrounding epithelial lining instead of the granulation tissue. So, what the treatment is is surgical excretion, cryotherapy for the small lesions, or using with the laser. These are the common treatment processes for the mucosal. You can see the mucosa This one is very small procedure. Nothing. First, uh, we will put uh, uh, incision surrounding the mucosal and take it out normally and we can switch it. Only thing we never uh, uh, put any remnants on the particular area, there will be chance of recurrence will be more. This is a complete removal of the mucosal. 
Next one is the Ranla. This is the retention that is due to oxidation or trauma to the duct sublingual or submandibular cellulose, resulting in extravasation of mucus, present the mucus retention cyst and the mucus extravasation phenomenon. So it's commonly seen on the floor of mouth and usually seen unilateral in the ranging of size of 1 to 3 centimeters. So it's like a flow soft fluctuant swelling with a normal of bluish color as well as the frog's belly. These are the clinical symptoms. Plunging granular is uh, that uh, seen extra orally. It come out to a sublingual or submandular region. The well be swelling will be there. On the CT or MRI, we can see uh, the extraction of flow it come out. So the surgical management is intraoral granular cyst inoculation along with the accession of sub uh, sublingual gland to minimize the recurrence. And the plunging granular, the accession of the combined intraoral and transcervical approach. So the cervical access approach is not required. Intraoral accession of sublingual gland and with mass placing it to some uh, spontaneous resolution of the cervical component. The sinucleation along the uh, sublingual or mass placing. Two times we have mostly the enucleation or mass placing. We can do it depends upon the size of the ranula. on the picture the incision is placed on the above the ranula so we preserve the supply uh, the sapling and some other salary intact also so the recurrence rates for this is not the Relaxation is around 25 but uh, mass utilization only we are doing is 62 89 percent will be there. That's the most common thing. Excision is uh, more better compared to the mass utilization. Then, surgically manage the treatment surgically, preserve the method is by mass utilization. So mass mobilization nothing but we are doing uh, the removal of cystic guide and uh, we'll wait for the healing next one is that we're going for the neoplasm there are a lot of uh cellular neoplasms are the major cellular neoplasm benign the most common parotid tumor is a player more figured now Person tumor is the second most uh, common one and uh, most common submandibular one is pleomorphic. So first one is the parotid and second one is the submandibular. The major cellular number is the magnum that is mucoepidural carcinoma and uh, adenocystic carcinoma. These are the main things. So minor cellular gland neoplasm uh, like that uh, commonly by the pleomorphic you know, that is seen on the palate and the upper leg. Uh, most malian one is the adenocyst carcinoma seen on the parietal region. So, already know you said in the uh, oral pathology, what are the uh, benign and benign is low growing, soft, rubbery consistency. Do not ulcerate and do not associate in uh, pains. And generally painless, non fixating to underlying and underlying structures. 85% of the parotid neoplasms are benign, but many sometimes will be fast growing. Uh, may isolate and enter the bone. The cranial nerve also will be involved with like facial nerve palsy will be there. Facial nerve also will be affected. So, etc. And uh, nodal metastasis also will be happen. So, the surgical management for the Parotid two means the incision of parotid not be there will be spillage will be there and it will cause structures. 
So the procedure has been higher rate of local recurrence and press the facial nerve injury will be there. So of uh, the biopsy only indicated by the tumor is inoperable due to advanced malignancy. In advanced stage, then go for the right to the radiotherapy or the chemotherapy. Basic procedure like a superficial parotidectomy after an FNAC fine needle aspiration cytology or solution provides for biopsy specific you want to identify what type of lesion. Total parotectomy is that the entire lobe to be involved and then we will go for the total parotectomy. And this is a malignant lesion that uh, depends upon the frozen section and uh, decade rate of facial nerve. Preservation is very important. Submandular neoplasm like the submandular cell adenectomy is performed and major cellular tumors like the surgical treatment depends on the site. It's on the palate, uh, upper lip and you know. the extent of the disease, the tumor of the lip and the palate involves the local excision that is similar for compared to the major cellular class. So the main uh, going for the uh, classic bladder incision or uh, uh, with the lower macular incision and also we go for the neck distension also will go for there. So in that uh, we will go for modified uh, bladder incision then we will go for the bladder dissection and uh, uh, do not spill age the complete excision will be Remove and the facial nerve, everything will be preserved. How much we can preserve, we can preserve, otherwise, uh, we will take it out. But we don't, must inform to the inform and uh, take the right concern, concern from the patient because all the facial nerve branches are passing through the parallel and also careful. that we will go layer by layer closure then the same uh, period there will be high chance if there will be total parotectomy or partial parotectomy depends upon the size total parotectomy there will be chance of facial no uh, margin parotectomy uh, or partial parotectomy there will be less chance so we will put the corrugated drain tube will be placed inside them, so be, the bleeding will be there And uh, next one is the facial nerve identification. That's very important. Uh, the, uh, I already mentioned you know, the facial nerve from starts from the exam and below that uh, around uh, three to three point five centimeters below the from the exam where we enter. Uh, not three, uh, one point five centimeters. The main uh, that uh, so temporal branch that will be around three point five. So, so it will divide the temple trigomatic medial maxillary like that. So when you're going for the dissection, we always uh, layer by layer dissection also, and uh, we will reflect all the soft tissue mass because parietal capsule will be there. We will uh, check about the Says the facial nerve, the maximum we, we will uh, never remove the facial nerve. And as the all the artery and the subandral gland incision, the same as sub subandral incision will place and take it out. Uh, and the all the structures also will preserve. You can see in this diagram how they are performing. It is not that much you will study. You must roughly study about what are the treatment procedures we will go for the uh, neoplasm. So the main things we will take it out.
So the main thing in the person, you know, approaching the seller at the uh, level of high order and keeping the decision deep in the client's facial covering. So dividing the facial vessels uh, well below the mandible and or lifting up the ligated stumps. And for the tail of parotid or uh, submandible gland also. Uh, to the retromandibular vein and the to trace forward. So the main things we will go for these uh, the lingual nerve, hypoglossal nerve, uh, facial artery will be there. All things we want to preserve. So mainly the indication for the excision of the uh, submandibular gland is uh, repeated enlargement of the gland, uh, salivary gland calculi or the Ductal synapses or suspended uh, seven mandibular neoplasm. So you must go for a careful insertion is very needed. Yeah, the investigation mostly for the uh, submandibular gland is same like a uh, cellography, MRI or FNAC like that. So the first way we'll go for the operation procedures. Uh, mainly the, the incision is just below the mandible at the level of the higher bone, and uh, incision is carried through the skin and subcutaneous tissue like the platys mass for the capsule of the submandibular gland, and the facial vein and the extensional vein, and the facial vein is like a uh, the facial capsule also uh, inside and uh, subcapsule dissection will go and the dissection always using the blunt uh, scissors don't use any uh, sharp scissors and you will mobilize the entire the submandibular gland uh, from the muscle and exposing the posterior flow that the main things we will do. So the manage of the malignant salivary gland tumors, the basic thing is so superficial parotomy after the FNAC, all the lesion will provide the biopsy specimen. And uh, for suspected malignant lesions like the clinical pages and oral findings for that uh, cryotherapy uh, that preserves the preservation and the accession of the nerve. So the main protocol for the masking that is very important and if you in the facial nerve and the pores through the substance of the parallel so and if you where the pores is going on to assist the manners some surgeons use the nerve stimulated to avoid the uh, use of paralytic and anesthetic agents also. If you immediate intraoperative pathology examination reveals that the tumor is actually high grade or more than 4 cm thick to the diameter and the lymph nodes also involved the and within this specimen, complete total parotomy should be performed. So total parotomy with the uh, lymph node will take it out. If the facial nerve or its branches is not going to directly involved to the tumor, then sacrifice or the pathology diagnosis or malignant must be confirmed intraoperatively by the cross section prior to the sacrificing involving the facial nerve branches. So, complete examination which are the nerves also will remove and preserve the facial nerves. And tumor to the deep lower treated total parotomy and fixation of facial nerve and branches is the first and most important step. Neck decision that is very important. Other indicate like a tumor uh, greater than 4 cm die, tumor that a high grade inversion of the local structures. Recon tumors uh, when no neck decision can be performed initially. And the facial nerve reconstruction that is very important. If or conlater greater or nerve may be used as the interposition graft. Using with the sacrament sensation, the area normally separated by this nerve. 
So another option is the intra hypoglossal nerve. Also the uh, accessory nerve will be anastomosed. And uh, other graft will may be used called the sural nerve that will take on from the lip. Complication mostly seen after the surgery is frictional pal uh, palsy fry syndrome that is associated of the SOL region. Salary facility will be there. Oracle temple nerve damage will be there. Facial nerve no damage to the buccal band segmenting was not severe. Present of course, you will that here connection between the post uh, ganglion coordinate fibers from the aortic ganglion and the post ganglion synaptic from the place of vehicle synaptic ganglion to skin superficially or gunda. Paracetia to the yellow, external chewing to the oracle nerve will be damaged. Cellular and fistula that is commonly seen on the fixation of the cellular gland, collection of the saliva under the skin flap. These are the main things. So, in the exam point of view, we will study about the cellography, uh, cellulitis, cellulitic calculi, how to remove. These are the common things they will, you will study. Other is not that much important, but you must be you uh, must study uh, uh, the outline of the neoplasm. How will you manage for a neoplasm case for the salary client? Thank you.